Hello, my name is Mary Wiley and this presentation focuses on ventilated associated pneumonia and preventative strategies that need to be in place. In healthcare, there are always improvements that need to be made. As modern technology and the benefits of nursing research, there are continuous opportunities for improvements in the clinical practice. This presentation, as I stated, does focus on ventilated associated pneumonia and preventative strategies to reduce the occurrence of one of the most common healthcare acquired infections. It is important to address these issues to achieve quality improvement and maintain patient safety. Healthcare associated infections are infections that patients acquire after 48 hours of admission to a hospital. Per CDC, a health Care associated infection prevalence survey has indicated that one in every 31 patients develop some form of hospital acquired infections during their stay. Ventilated associated pneumonia is categorized under one of the many conditions of healthcare associated infections. The clinical problem that is prevalent in this paper highlights the awareness of ventilated associated pneumonia and preventative strategies to reduce the occurrence. Due to current times, the healthcare system is facing one of the biggest crises in modern history. In relation to hospital infections, disinfection and sterilization is an increasing concern. Despite these measures to improve sanitary concerns, there is still quite a risk for patients developing ventilated associated pneumonia. In addition, healthcare workers are facing external stressors such as nursing staff shortages and having to work with limited supplies. Also, tremendous barriers compromise the integrity of patient safety. Healthcare professionals need to remain diligent and acknowledge that this crisis is occurring in order to promote patient safety and ensure that the highest quality of care is provided to public health. There are hundreds of available research about ventilated associated pneumonia. Let us review the crucial aspects of this healthcare acquired infection. How does an individual run the risk for developing ventilated associated pneumonia? Well, individuals who experience an acute lung injury, acute respiratory distress syndrome, or any other conditions causing a decline in their respiratory effort will be needing a mechanical ventilator. There are two types of mechanical ventilation. Endotracheal intubation is one and it involves a tube inserted through the trachea into the airway. The second one is a tracheostomy, which is an opening that is surgically created into the neck, which allows tube placement because it directly exposes the tube into the lungs. Both measures increase the risk for ventilated associated pneumonia due to the tube placement granting access to the lower respiratory tract due to the epiglottis continuously being open. This further increases the risk for aspiration of substances. In addition, ventilator and respiratory equipment healthcare professionals' practices and buildup of biofilm and tubing are all opportunities for pathogens to invade the vulnerable lungs. Patients with underlying conditions such as chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder are at an even greater risk for developing any hospital-associated infections. Vulnerable patients increase their morbidity and mortality rate if they develop any nosocomial infections, including ventilated associated pneumonia. Ventilated associated pneumonia increases the duration of hospital stays by seven days and increase the total cost of medical bills by $40,000. This statistic alone is important to understand and acknowledge. The patient and family does not only have to deal with the current condition of the patient, but now has additional financial costs to worry about. Physical, emotional, fin and financial burdens will be prominent individuals who develop ventilated associated infections. All these factors can be diminished if appropriate measures are taken in place to prevent ventilated associated pneumonia. To focus back on the purpose of this presentation, it is important to cover how I intend to operate operationalize the needed practice change in our practice environment. 
before diving into exact intervention methods or implementation practices, it is crucial to acknowledge different steps for engaging healthcare professionals in practice changes. As I mentioned, the healthcare system is, has been dealing, has been facing a battle with the pandemic over the last year and a half. Despite challenges that come with COVID-19, healthcare professionals are still expected to be resilient and work past the additional hardships. While management wants to implement, I'm sorry, when management wants to implement changes in nursing practice, it is beneficial to acknowledge how burnt out nurses and other healthcare professionals may be. Therefore, upper, upper, operationalizing change into practice needs to be done in a way that is realistic to improve healthcare professionals participation and ensure patient safety is being met. One way to initiate change in practice is to ensure all new innovations are aligning with existing cultural values. There cannot be change done that totally disregards healthcare professionals passion for their field. Healthcare professionals have a shared passion, and that is to provide care to patients. New, inno new innovations that limit their passion and care for their patients will have a harder time being implemented on. Another engaging way to promote change is to allow nurses and staff members to give feedback on the change that is being implemented. This allows trust within the healthcare professionals and an open communication for the staff and management. Lastly, allowing appropriate time to fully understand what is being expected from nurses and staff only increases engagement and determination to succeed. Now let's discuss the various interventions to prevent ventilated associated ammonia. Avoiding mechanical intubation is the best strategy to preventing ventilated associated ammonia. However, if there are no other options than to mechanically intubate a patient, staff workers should advocate the use of non-invasive positive pressure devices if possible. Another prevention strategy is to minimize sedation by interrupting sedative medications in order to promote a more awake state. This minimizes the duration of patients being on a mechanical ventilator and therefore decreases the risk for ventilated associated pneumonia. It is important to also provide frequent oral care as bacteria colonization will have a direct route to the lungs. In addition to oral care, respiratory therapists and nurses can simultaneously perform subglottic suctioning to reduce buildup of secretions. Nurses should also maintain optimal positioning for the patient. Therefore, staff should elevate the head of the bed between 30 to 45 degrees. This also limits acid reflux and aspiration from occurring. Although it is extremely tough to ensure adequate staffing, it is really important to have interprofessional collaboration for a patient on a mechanical ventilator. Lastly, it is crucial to enforce infection control. This includes re-educating the thorough process of hand washing and hand hygiene. Nurses and healthcare staff should remember to remove any wristwatches, rings, or any other jewelry to prevent transmissions of pathogens to each patient. When, once these preventative strategies are introduced into practice, the theoretical model that will be used to facilitate these changes will be based on the nudge theory. This theory is based on guiding individuals to make an improved decision and judgment during practice. Evidence will be provided to the healthcare staff members to show the effectiveness of these interventions to prevent ventilated associated pneumonia. It is important to allow staff members appropriate time to understand the protocols and again, make sure they have the opportunity to give feedback. I mentioned the current crisis of the healthcare field that the healthcare field is facing today. Therefore, there are plenty of barriers that may affect implementation to change in healthcare. For instance, interprofessional collaboration with healthcare professionals may be a challenge due to the shortage of staff members. Therefore, delegating care to nursing assistants or other unlicensed assistive personnel once patients are no longer at a critical state will be effective. 
educational training can, another, can be another barrier to implementing change. Time spent on additional training can be limited due to the already heavy clinical workloads. Therefore, ensuring staff members receive incentives for their continuous education and training hours will be beneficial. Internal evidence is used in research and in management. It could apply to this intervention strategy of ventilated associate pneumonia by gathering data to ensure how effective the process is going along. One source of internal evidence is utilizing surveys. Management can provide survey questions to evaluate their perceptions from healthcare staff of the preventative strategies for ventilated associated pneumonia. It is important to also review data after months have passed to see the rates of ventilated associated pneumonia. Once management reviews survey information and incident rates of ventilated associated pneumonia, outcomes improvements will be analyzed and demonstrated. Lastly, there are ethical considerations when it comes to any change in the practice environment. Patient safety is the most crucial priority in health care, as I mentioned. Along with patient safety, patients' rights should always be acknowledged. Therefore, healthcare staff should educate the patients on the risk of ventilated associated pneumonia and the preventative measures that will be taken in place in order to reduce this from occurring. This ensures patient rights are met and this only continues to build a trusting environment for patients. To recap the purpose of this presentation, nosocomial infections can be preventative. Therefore, preventative measures are integrated into practice to help diminish the occurrence of infections in the hospital. When there is a change in practice, it needs to be integrated appropriately to achieve optimal results. There are various models that could apply to help facility operational change into practice, ensuring that appropriate education and training is present and allowing for feedback from healthcare staff only contributes to successful outcomes. Ultimately, we as healthcare providers have the duty to protect and serve public health. Therefore, we must make it our top priority and effectively participate on all measures to achieve that. And that would be all for my presentation. Thank you for listening.